Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for wanting to be with us and we ask that you would help us to learn how to have a better personal relationship with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Our text for this week is found in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 2 verses 15 through 18 genesis chapter 2 verse 15 through 18 and i'm reading from the new international version it reads the lord god took the man and put him into in the garden of eden to work it and take care of it and the lord god commanded the man you are free to eat from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. The Lord God said, it's not good for man to be alone. And I will make a helper suitable for him. That's verse 18, where we'll spend most of our time today. Verses uh, 15 and through uh, 17 basically uh, deals with uh, God's command and God's responsibility to man. And verse 18 deals with uh, a daily opportunity to practice our relationship with God. Uh, now, remember we're working under a umbrella, a series title God wants to be with us and in order to be with somebody you've got to have a relationship with them you got to relate to them you got to have something in common you've got to be together on things now this week's uh, sermon is titled practicing personal relationships practicing personal relationships now, it has been said often by your sermon articulator that marriage is a daily opportunity to practice our relationship with God. With man being the, the head of the household uh, representing God in the relationship, woman being like the church representing uh, the weaker vessel like mankind is in the relationship and it gives us in marriage a daily opportunity to, to practice our relationship with God. Too often, our main relationships are the ones that suffer the most neglect. God performed the first wedding ceremony in the Garden of Eden, putting Adam and Eve together as one. That fact should tell us that marriage is important to God. Verse uh, 24 in the second chapter of Genesis state that for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother to be united with his wife and they will become one flesh. Jesus himself agreed with God when he stated in Matthew chapter 19 verse 6, says, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. That's the English Standard Version. Now, we could not leave the Apostle Paul out of this discussion because he agreed with God and Jesus and said in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 3, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Amos 3 and 3 says, do, do two walk together unless they have agreed to meet? The English Standard Version again. Now that same verse, Amos 3 and 3 in the message version, puts it like this, gives a different twist to it. 
do two people walk hand in hand if they aren't going to the same place? Hallelujah. That's a powerful statement. First, you don't have to be currently together in the same geographical location just to agree that you are both going to the same place. You may use different routes to arrive at the same destination. And too often in relationships, we think that it has to be my way or no way. When what's important is getting to the same destination and agreeing that that's where you're going. And then perhaps look at both sides of it and make a decision to agree on one of the routes that you would take. One can travel by plane and the other can be afraid to fly so they travel by train. But when they are, have arrived and when they have agreed to end up together in one the same destination, that's agreement. That's encouraging because I don't always agree with God. But I'm learning to agree with God's plan and route so I won't end up in Lost Valley and having to backtrack to get on the right road so I can get to the place that God will meet me at. And it don't matter to me where God meets me as long as he's there. Because there are some awful places God might tell you to go. Some awful situations. But if God is there, that's the best place for us to be. Now briefly, let's look at the first covenant with the idea that marriage is a covenant or agreement and not a contract. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, we hear a command or the term of the covenant or agreement from God. Of all the trees of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat thereof. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. A covenant is a binding agreement between two or more parties that govern their relationship. The word command is introduced at this point because it's God who makes the terms of the covenant or agreement. Just as in marriage, the man proposes to the woman and asks her parents for permission to marry her. And all the woman has to do is say, I will, and I do. God is the creator and man is the creature or a royal tenant. I like that term. I, I saw that the other day in, in study. A ro we are a royal tenant in the relationship, but God is the creator in God's wonderful world. So God has the right to tell us what he can and cannot do or what we can and cannot do. God didn't ask for Adam's advice. He simply gave him his commandment. God had given great honor and privilege to Adam in making him the vice regent on the earth. He put him in charge of, of things, of, 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 of maintaining it, of working it. But with privilege always comes responsibility. The same divine word that brought the universe into being also expresses God's love and will to Adam and Eve and their descendants. Psalms 33 verse 11 talks about those descendants. Obedience to God's word 
would keep them in the sphere of influence of God's fellowship and his approval. All of God's commands are good commands and brings good things to those who obey them. Psalms 118 verse 39 and Proverbs uh, 6 chapter verse 20 through 23 and read the message version on that. And his commands according to 1 John chapter 5 verse 3 are not burdensome. They're not hard. They're not heavy on us. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. In Hebrews chapter 10, it, refer, it, it infers that Jesus agreed to come down and die for lost humanity if God would make him a body. Jesus lived up to the agreement when he died on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. They buried him, but in three days he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth under his control and authority. And we can learn from Jesus that keeping an agreement or covenant, no matter how difficult it might seem, is possible by the grace of God. From a human view, it must have been very difficult with what he went through for Jesus to go to Calvary on behalf of his enemies. But remember, for this purpose, Jesus says, came I into the world. He marched up Valdezarosa and they nailed him to that cross and he died. But God raised him up with all power under his control and responsibility. With power and authority comes responsibility. So how does agree agreeing work best in practicing a healthy relationship? Next week, we'll answer that question if we can agree to meet at this place, the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church YouTube channel. And with that, let's pray and say Arrivederci or goodbye. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for your word. We ask now that you would make it come alive in us so that we can agree with you and be responsible participants in our relationship with you and with our fellow man. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I pray that God will bless you with this word and that your relationship, your personal relationship with him will grow and that your relationship with one another will be strengthened. So with that, we'll see you next week. So long.